So what exactly can a 50% gray layer show us about the colors in our image? Well, actually quite a bit. I'm gonna break down how this can help us using three blend modes, lighter color, darker color, and luminosity. So let's jump in. I got a lot of stuff to talk to you about. By now you all know that one of my favorite topics to discuss is color in Photoshop. But color is also one of the hardest things for many photographers to grasp. And that's because there's a lot of information in color. Because of this color information overload, many people actually prefer to work in black and white because it's a lot simpler. But when you understand color, you can make better black and white images, which we've discussed many times on this channel, but that's not what I want to discuss. I want to discuss how you can gain some mastery on color just by using a 50% gray layer on your image. Now to demonstrate this, we're going to be using this test chart. Now what I need to do is I need to add a solid color fill layer to the top of this. Now I usually just use a solid color fill for this, but you can fill a blank layer with 50% gray if you'd like. What you're going to need to do here is make sure this solid color picker is set to 128 in the RGNB. That will make sure that you have a pure 50% gray, neutral gray tonal value. 128, tab, 128, tab, 128. We now have a perfect 128 neutral color overlay here. Now here's where the magic happens. You know, as I'm working through some stuff and experimenting, this was just a complete accident. And as I was scrolling through some blend modes, I saw this one that said lighter color. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I saw this one that said darker color. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I, I didn't really like the results that I got, but it, something dawned on me. Holy cow, this is showing me a lot of really valuable information. What this is doing here is when we set this to the lighter color blend mode, this is showing us every color or tonal value that is lighter than 50% gray. And what we can see by that is when we click lighter color, that anything above zone five here from six through 10 is showing up. Everything else is actually turning neutral. And this shows us a lot of valuable information, especially when it comes to colors, maybe not tonal values, but definitely with color, because this is showing me that these colors are lighter than 50% gray. It's also basically telling me that those are the most prominent colors that the viewer is going to see first. This is a lot like tonal values. Tonal values in our image, if it's brighter than 50% gray, the eye typically will go there first. Your highest highlight is where the eye is going to be attracted to immediately. So when we turn this on and we see this, we say, hold on a second. These colors are brighter than 50% gray. So these are the colors that are going to stand out to my viewer first. And then as I look at the images, I can kind of see that this image right here, I definitely am looking at that portion of her face more. Maybe that has something to do with the tonal values. But when I change this to something like darker color, we can see all the colors that the viewer is not paying a whole lot of attention to when they immediately look at your image. Now, this isn't always the case. There are some images where everything is relatively dark and therefore the brightest color is what the viewer is going to be looking at. But it does give us some valuable information, especially as we look at this in some practical application across many different genres of images. Then the next thing I did as I was scrolling through here and looking at different blend modes was luminosity. I was like, this looks really odd. At first, I didn't like the result that I saw, but then as I was started to look at it a little bit more, it started to identify some really important things to me, specifically when I'm looking at all these other uh, images here, not necessarily the color strip. When you set this to luminosity, it's basically telling all of your neutral colors to become 50% gray. And then all of your colors that are more dominant will appear brighter. So this is showing me where the dominant colors are in every one of these images. If I turn this off, we can definitely see that, that these colors are shining through very well. It also shows me the potential of saturation that is available within that image. Now, this isn't really that helpful when we look at a test swatch like this. So let's look at some practical application. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to put a solid color fill on top of this image. It's already set to 128, 128, 128, because that's what I had set over here. But again, if yours was some other color in your primary color, we would change this to 128. You can press tab, which will go right down to the next one, 128, and then tab, and then 128. I'm going to break this down again. We're going to change this to the darker color. When we do this, the 50% gray layer with the darker color selected is showing us any colors on this image that are darker than 50% gray meaning these are the colors that the viewer is not going to look at quite as fast, but they are definitely there and they're definitely prominent. If we change this to lighter color, we see all the colors that the viewer immediately gravitates towards when they look at the image. And if we turn this off, 
Now you can clearly see it. Of course we're drawn to the blue and to the yellow of the beak in this bird. Now if I change this to luminosity, look at this. This shows us what our most dominant colors are in this image. So if you're trying to make pleasing color palettes that are pleasing to the eye using the color wheel, this can give you a pretty good identification of what colors are the most dominant in the image by reducing all of the less saturated colors and making the more saturated colors appear dominant in this uh, demonstration here. Does this help for editing the image? It does, but it's also more of one of those checks and balances kinds of things. And we'll talk about this when we get to the last image, when I show you how this looks on a raw image. Right now, I just want you to take this in and absorb it. As I edited this picture, did I use this technique? No, I used my artist intuition to make this a complementary color scheme with the blue and the yellow of the bird's beak or blue and orange, depending on the color wheel that you are targeting. Now we go to this image. Again, we'll do the same thing. I've already got that selected over here. I've already got this selected at 128, 128. So I'll just put this solid color fill on top and press OK because I know that that's already neutral. Again, I'm going to show you this again on a different type of image. I want to show you this on every genre. And the reason why is because many times when I do a tutorial, if I just showed you this image, I'd get tons of comments say, how would I do this on an architecture image? How would I do this on wildlife? How would I use this on portrait? Well, it's all the same because it's all about color and color is well the same in every single image. It's color and color brings us in and color gives us joy and color uh, can give us anxiety and color can do all these different things to us. And no matter the image, it has color unless it's black and white. So we change this to lighter color. We can clearly see that this is the area that I was brought into in this image that I produced here. I knew that instinctively as I was building the image because the tonal values are also brighter here. Just so happens that those colors also happen to be the lighter colors in the image, which again, viewer is going to gravitate towards areas of lightness in your image, whether that's a tonal quality or color quality. So now I'll change this to darker color and we can see all the colors in the image where the viewer is not necessarily paying as much attention to, but are definitely important when it comes to the color scheme of this image. And if we want to see how this color scheme is working, we can change this to luminosity and we see that the most dominant colors in this image are this yellowish color that tends to look a little bit green when we use this neutral, uh, this neutral technique here, but we have a kind of a, a spread between yellow and orange and blue. And there's a lot of that that goes throughout the entire image. And that's what makes it harmonious. And that's what makes the viewer enjoy it. Let's go ahead and look at a portrait image. Now this portrait image, we can clearly see that the colors are not that powerful. And I'll show you how you can use this technique to help you boost those colors as well. Again, solid color fill. It's already set to 128, 128, 128. Now we'll change the blend mode here darker color. Those are the, the colors in the image that the viewer is not paying as much attention to. So that can be a really important thing for you, because if you look at this and you say, well, I really want the viewer to pay more attention to her eyes. Well, in that case, you might need to brighten up the color or add some more tonal value to the eyes to make the viewer want to go there more. We go look at lighter color. We are definitely looking at her face first and not necessarily making as much of a connection to her eyes because that tends to be the lightest portion of the image. Now, because eyes are recognizable and when someone's staring at you, you typically stare at their eyes too. That's almost obvious, but not in photography. We want to make sure that the viewer goes where we want them to go. Let's do one more thing here before I show you how to edit with this. Change it to luminosity. When we change this to luminosity, as opposed to the other images where I tend to work very heavily with color, and this is an Adobe stock image, we can see that the colors in this image are not very dominant. They're, they're subtle. Okay. So when we change this to luminosity, how could we use this to edit the image? It's a great question. I'm going to click on the background layer here and I can use anything, any of the color tools in here I can use. I can start with something like saturation or vibrance for sake of uh, ease. We'll use HSL. And the reason why I want to use HSL is because this has something called the targeted adjustment tool here where I can then target these colors. I could click on that color and it's going to tell me that that's red and I can add some more saturation to her face. Now I don't want to do this because when we turn this off, you're clearly going to see that there's way too much saturation in her face, but this gives you a good idea of what this color map is doing for us. As we drop this color down a little bit, that's looking much better on the color map. And when we turn this off, there is a lot more life and color in her face. Now we can clearly see that with the map here, the colors are there, but they're very subtle. It's almost like they have a wash over them, like a gray drab, dull wash over them. 
When we hit that HSL adjustment layer though, we give it a little boost in saturation. We could also add a little bit of lightness to this or maybe even a little bit of darkness to this. That'll help round off that color. Usually as I increase saturation, I like to add some value to it, whether that's a darker value or a brighter value. It helps round that color off so it's not so powerful and saturated. Now, when we look at the before and the after, you can see there's a lot more life in the reds of her face. This is actually an incredibly helpful technique because many of the questions I get are, Blake, how do I know when my color has gone too far? Or how do I know when I haven't taken my color far enough? Well, this map does a great job of showing me how far I can take my color. And if I take it too far, like I go in my reds like I was, we'll do that again. If I take it too far, this will clearly tell us because it's really bright. It's very saturated. If your color looks this saturated underneath this map that we have here, it is way too saturated. So you want to dull this down a little bit. Now, if we go down to here and make it zero where it was when we started, you can tell that those colors are not very saturated and they might need a little bit of help. We boost them up. We don't need to give them a whole lot, maybe just a plus 25, nothing too crazy, but it just adds some life to the color in her face. Now we'll take a look at even an architecture image. Yes, this works on everything. We'll add this solid color fill here. Okay. Again, we'll go to lighter color. Clearly the viewer is being pulled in by the, by the white or lighter colors that are in the image towards the background of the image. We go to darker color and we can see what's more secondary to the viewer's eyes. What's primary to the viewer's eyes is going to be lighter color. What's secondary to the viewer's eyes is going to be darker color. And then we can see the color map here. And clearly with this color map, we can tell that we have a really good complementary color scheme with yellows and blues going on. And that's a pretty good assessment tool there. Pretty straightforward. Now let's look at this in terms of how this works from a raw image straight out of camera to after my Adobe camera raw processing to my final image that you see here. If we turn this color fill on and I change this to something like lighter color, this is going to show us again where the viewer is coming in and looking at the color first. What colors are most prominent that the viewer is looking at? Now, when we have this as a raw file, you can see that there's so much color that the viewer is coming in on that they're coming in from, they're really getting kind of stuck here because that's where the most potent color is. Then they're back here a little bit and then they even go to the tree branches over here a little bit. And we turn this off, you can clearly see that, that this is more present to our eyes first. In my processing of this, I kind of reversed that a little bit. I subdued it so that I had good color separation between the yellows and the greens and the oranges here to really draw the viewer into this space here and push that area back a little bit over here because I really don't want them to see it as much. Now, after my Adobe Camera Raw processing, this is what this was the straight raw file that we see here. This is after Adobe Camera Raw, and this is again my final work. Now. What does this look like with our color map? Well, let me turn these off. With our color map, you can see that again, our colors are slightly subdued. And if you really look here, a trained eye can see that there is quite a bit of blue in here. And again, we don't really want blue in our waterfalls, now, especially with this color combination. A blue and green like this is not a very good color combination. And you can see right off the bat why the viewer doesn't really gravitate towards this image as much. This is, again, straight out of camera. That's why if anybody says, I take images straight out of camera and I don't do all that processing, well, guess what? Good for you, <laughs> okay? Here's your prize. <laughs> your prize is uh, the viewer doesn't really care about most of your image. <laughs> let, me, let me digress on that one. Now, when we turn this layer on, we can see how I use color and tone to kind of tighten the whole image up a little bit and really pull the viewer into this space here. Now, I wanted this to be a side note over here to balance out the composition, but the viewer is really pulled in at this dynamic angle here. We turn that off and where are they? They're all over the place. There's that bright blasting glow of that waterfall in their face. There's this bright blasting glow of this color here. So this color map does a wonderful job of showing me what we're looking at in the image. You can see that as I uh, went through my editing process, here's straight out of the camera. This is straight out of Adobe Camera Raw. I started to get really close to color separation between my yellows and my oranges out of Adobe Camera Raw, but it wasn't enough. I needed all my tools in Photoshop to make this happen. And this is the final result. You can see I pushed those blues back. I pulled the yellows and the greens forward so that this could have a very nice yellow and green color scheme going on with all other colors pushed back, subdued, and not gaining the viewer's attention. It's just great now that I have a check and balance here that can help me visualize why my colors are working. And that's the important part. As I said in the beginning of this video, 
Most of the questions that I get about color are, I don't understand if I have too much color. How do I know if my colors are working together? How do I know if they're working against each other? Well, this very simple 50% gray layer with three different blend modes does a wonderful job. Again, what do we use it for? Well, if we turn this on and we set this to lighter color, those are the colors or the tonal values in this case that the viewer is being drawn towards first. Darker color, those are the colors that the viewer sees secondarily or next. Luminosity, we'll change it to luminosity, and this is what separates out the color, pulls it away. It basically neutralizes all the other colors that are not as dominant and shows you your dominant colors so that you can see exactly what colors the viewer is gravitating towards first when they look at your image. I would recommend going through all of your portfolio images and throwing this 50% gray layer on top and take a look at what you see. Change it to lighter color. What are they looking at? Change it to darker color. What are they not looking at or what are they looking at secondarily? And what does your color scheme look like? How is it on the color wheel? Is it balanced? Does it look good? Do you have a good color scheme going on? Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things like color, make them seemingly simple in Photoshop so that you can use them in your workflow today.